The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Well, I'm standing at the doorway of one of the seven worldwide Mercy Ministries homes. It's through Mercy's doors that thousands of young women walk in hurt, hopeless, and broken with life-controlling issues such as eating disorders, addictions, cutting, unplanned pregnancies, or even being the victim of sex trafficking. However, they walk out of Mercy with a new story of hope and transformation. It has been my heart since the beginning of Joyce Meyer Ministries to help the hurting. And that's why we've joined with Mercy Ministries in their effort to provide free help and love to those young women. Today, I invite you into Mercy Ministries here in St. Louis to see how God's healing and restoration is helping young women to permanently stop destructive cycles and prepare them to take hope out into their communities. Well, I'm here with my good friend, Nancy Alcorn, who is the founder and president of Mercy Ministries. Well, Nancy, it's good to be here at the Mercy Home with you today. Oh, we love having you here. It's just great. Well, Nancy, you've been doing this for 30 years, and uh, I guess we should explain what doing this is. What exactly is it that you that you do here, and why do you feel that what you're doing is so successful? Well, you know, um, what we actually do is we have uh, homes in this country and three other countries where girls between the ages of 13 to 28 who really want help can come choose to come. And that's a key, isn't it? Really want help. Yes, and they make the choice themselves. Right. You know, years ago, I worked in the government system and a correctional facility where girls were, you know, sent by juvenile <laughs> court judges, and they right. didn't want help. They, it was just crazy, and you know, yeah. doing time. But, but for a girl to choose to want to come, uh, right. girls that have uh, problems with addictions, uh, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, uh, cutting, eating disorders, pr unplanned pregnancy, suicidal right. tendencies, just about every problem that exists today. Right. If a young girl who wants help and wants to overcome can come in, she can come in and the average length of stay is six months. And, and the difference is number one, she's choosing and God honors our choices. But secondly, because we do not take any government funding and we take girls in free of charge because most of them could not pay. We have the freedom to share Christ. And you're one of our biggest partners, Joyce, and you make you help make it possible for us to get the message of Christ into their hearts so that they can be born again and go out and live a right. different way. Well, and if we're partnering with you, then that means that our partners are partnering That's right. with you. And you know, partnership is extremely important because we can only accomplish a certain amount by ourselves. And although what a person can do by themselves is valuable, it's multiplied many times over when we partner with one another. So I'm grateful to be able to help you do what you're doing because really when it all comes down to it, it's about helping people. Right, yeah, absolutely. That's and you know, really... we use so much of your materials, as you know, in the homes. And, and, and we, one of the things that we really uh, you know, emphasize every single day is speaking the word out loud having the girls speak the word out loud yeah. over their lives and identifying with who they are in Christ instead of, you know, many of them have been in treatment programs where they teach you once a, you're this, you're always right. going to yeah. be this. Yeah. And, and so we have to help get them get the labels off and help get the word on the inside of them as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we, we help them see themselves the way that, that God sees right. them and identify with who they are in Christ and understand that their past does not have to destroy the future. And you are one of the best examples we use about that, that no matter what you've been through, that you can overcome, that you don't have to stay yeah. a victim. You can be a victor and you can let your your testimony, uh, you can go out and share your story and the very thing that the enemy wanted you to use to destroy exactly. you. You can help other people. And you know, even though we're sitting here doing an interview, I'm just really prompted in my heart to just talk for a minute to the people watching by TV. And you know, we're telling you about lives that are in the process of restoration, but I have a feeling that many of you also need a lot of restoration in your life. And I just want you to know that God has got a good plan for you and there's nothing in your past that can prevent you from having a good life if you will really learn how to believe what God says about you more than you believe how you feel or what other people have told you. We're talking here about right now, there's 25 girls in this home, but they're here and then there's more that come in. And, mm -hmm. and so you, you help thousands and thousands of girls. 
What is your ultimate goal? When a girl comes in here broken, broken hearted, broken in every way, what is your goal for them when they leave? What Our what are, goal is that they would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and have a true revelation of who they are in Christ, that they are now the righteousness of God. There's, you know, that God sees them in right standing with him, that he's declared them not guilty. And then the second thing is very important for when they leave is that they understand the authority they have as a believer, that they can right. speak the word of God and they can uh, uh, deal with the enemy themselves, that they, it's no longer, you know, come to the staff and we'll mm -hmm. pray with you, but that right. we, you know, halfway through the program, we make a shift where we go, well, we, we're, you're going to pray and we're going to agree with you, you know. Well, you know, Nancy, one of the things that people have to be taught is how to make right decisions. Right. And people come to a place like this, or many of the people watching today that are, you just have a lot of brokenness in your life. I mean, yes, sometimes it's as a result of what other people have done to us. But many times our problems are also a result of just bad choices that we've made, whether we didn't know how to make right ones or we didn't choose to make right ones. In order to undo the damage that's been done in our life, we have to learn what God says and what he wants us to do and begin to make decisions according to the word of God, not according to our feelings. So you're trying to teach them also to take personal responsibility, which means to stop blaming, right. to stop you know, having a chip on their shoulder because they've been mistreated and realize that they have a great opportunity in front of them. And if they'll take hold of that opportunity, there's nobody that cannot have a really good life if they really want to do it. That's right. And, you know, it's it's a real challenge sometimes because many of the girls that walk through our doors have been, one young lady had been in um, 43 different treatment programs. 43. And some of them more than once. So her, fa her parents told me over 100 times. And treatment programs inundate you with the fact that you don't have a choice. This is just the way it is. This is just the way you were born. You will always be this way. There's nothing you can do about it. And, and they label and medicate. Let's just and medicate tell, your symptoms. And yeah, and, and never get to the root of the problem. So sometimes for girls like that, it's a real challenge because you, but, but we, we tell, we start out with Deuteronomy 30, 19. We empower them to know God says you have a choice. Right. And no matter what happened in your past, you can start making good choices today so that you'll be where you want to be tomorrow. And so you start where you are. And, you know, it's amazing how when, when, when a young girl that's been told for years, I, I, once an addict, always an addict, and all of a sudden she realizes, no, 2 uh, Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any person be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old right. things have passed away and all things are new. So you're, the slate's been wiped clean, baby. It's never you too got late a new for beginning. a new beginning, is it? Exactly. Never too late for a new beginning. I want you to remember that too. You know, it's never too late for a new beginning. No matter what it is that you might need a new beginning in, it's not too late. Today is the best day to begin again. So listen in, and I'll return with Nancy for some inspiring stories of changed lives. This is Fiop, and she has really severe problems with her joints. Well, Fiop had no money for medical care, but she's able to come here to the hospital in Persat and get free medical care. Now today I'm asking you if you will send your best gift to missions to help us continue the work here and to do works like this all over the world. I believe that if God's putting something in your heart, then he's certainly going to make you able to reach out and help hurting people like this. Thank you. When you give to Joyce Meyer Ministries Mission Outreach Hand of Hope, your donation literally goes around the world to help those who need it most. So contact us at 1-800-727-9673 or go to JoyceMeyer.org to make a donation and say, I will. And when you do, we'd like to send you the Fruit of the Spirit Action Plan as a thank you gift for your donation of any amount. Join us as we strive to relieve human suffering around the world and share the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm back with Nancy Alcorn, who is the founder and president of Mercy Ministries. You know, we've partnered with Mercy Ministries for years, including building this home here in St. Louis back in 2005. Well, Nancy, I'm sure glad that we were able, by the grace of God, to help you build this home and also to support the other works that you're doing. You now have seven homes, right? Right. And you're always looking to expand all the time. 
What are some of the reasons that young women seek help from Mercy Ministries? We see uh, young women extremely depressed, and a lot of that has to do with maybe backgrounds similar to yours, where there's been extreme sexual abuse, some even coming out of sex trafficking, girls that uh, have experimented heavily with uh, drugs and alcohol, you know, some of the eating cocaine, disorders, eating disorders, cutting, uh, girls that have just had a really rough set of circumstances growing up that are suicidal. Explain to our viewers what you mean by cutting. Some of them probably don't even know what that is. Well, self-harm, and there's a number of the, the most popular way is, is you know, cutting like with knives and really deep. So deep, actually cutting yourself. Cutting, cutting yourself, but there's also like rubbing, burning, uh, hitting yourself. And what's behind that? Why do girls do that? Uh, usually there's a lot of self-hate. Uh, there's a lot of strong emotional pain. And so they may be feeling emotional pain, and to divert that, they'll actually cause physical pain, that's it, which that's will it. then take their mind momentarily off of this emotional pain. That is exactly that right. And it's been proven uh, medically and scientifically that that actually happens inside your body. And it is just another way for Satan to cause people to harm themselves and keep giving expression to this self-hatred that he wants everybody to feel, which is right. totally against the Word of God. God wants us to love ourselves in a balanced way because He loves us. Well, many of the young women that come here are considered by the world and even treatment programs they've been in to be helpless and hopeless. What do you say about that? Is anybody hopeless? Well, I don't think anyone is hopeless at all because the Bible teaches us that. And Joyce, something really cool started happening in the last couple of years. We have actually started having young women who were told by psycho psychiatrists and treatment programs and psychologists and doctors, uh, you only have a few weeks to live or you only have a few months to live. And as a last resort, they'll come to mercy and they'll go back then after they graduate healed and whole and they'll they'll see their doctors. And we have actually had unsaved, secular psychiatrists that won't acknowledge God that are now referring young women to our program as a result of what they see, which is what we always say. You can argue with doctrine or you can ar argue with belief systems, but you <laughs> cannot argue with the transformed life. It That's is exactly what it is. exactly right. You know, when we tell people to study the Word of God, I always like to try to get people to understand this. The Word of God is different than the Word of people. Because the Word of God is actually Jesus. He is the Word made flesh. So when we sh look at somebody and say, God loves you, that statement is full of the power of God. Yes. Because it's God's Word. So it's just like you, you, the, the, it's, the Word of God are words that have the power of God stuffed in them. So when those words are spoken, received, and believed, that power then like destroys the problems in our life little by little and it heals us. The Word of God actually is like medicine for your soul. Right. So when we tell people the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word, I think they need to understand that the Word of God is different than other words. Let me, let me ask you another question. Um, is it true that you can receive the love and the mercy of God even while you're still in the midst of doing wrong things and manifesting imperfection? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I would be toast if that wasn't true. I wouldn't even be here today if that wasn't true. But no, I absolutely. But I'm sure that's probably one of the harder things for the girls who come here to grasp is that yes, they still have problems or they're just they're they're still just like coming out of problems. They're not out of the you know, today we talk to girls that have been here twelve days, mm -hmm. girls that have been here seven months. So naturally the girl that's been here seven months has made progress. The girl that's been here 12 days is still like probably got all kinds of issues. So it might be really hard for her to believe that God could love her right where she's at. But he does, doesn't he? He does. And and, and they're going to hear it day in and day out while they're here. And that's the, the good thing about having like that girl that's been here longer, she's getting ready to graduate. And so we call that peer, peer leadership. But we right. have, you know, peer leaders who can set the example for the younger ones just getting here. And that's just a continuous thing that goes on. But they see the proof and those girls are, you know, encouraging the other yeah. girls, you know, if God did this for me, he can do this for you. And he's no respecter of persons. And, 